The new robot is called EVA. That stands for the Executive Virtual Attending Physician. It's an autonomous robot. It's a robot which can navigate around the hospital in the intensive care unit and elsewhere automatically by itself. Uh, it has a sensor feature which allows us to, to pre-program the robot so it knows exactly where it should go. And then using an iPad, we can go ahead and send it to a patient's room directly, just with a push of a button. Uh, it can navigate through a busy hallway, busy hospital. It won't run into anybody. If there are people in the way, it actually navigates around them. It figures out how to go. And it goes there very easily, very quickly. So that saves us time. It allows us to see the patients very quickly. It allows us to go right to their room. And once we get there, we can use all of our, our cognitive skills to sort of focus on actual patient care and not on actually physical activities like driving your car or driving a robot or, or worrying about taking an elevator. It does all of that for us. A little ways. And then you can go ahead and zoom in. And you could go take a look at the vital signs. You can see the heart beating and the heart rate and the blood pressure and all of the other va variables right there. So the EVA robot is actually faster than our old robot. It, it, at first it really was zooming around the ICU sort of like a race car. And it was actually a little bit too fast. We were worried about that. Of course it's not too fast for neurosurgery, but you know that's a whole other matter. Uh, so we had to slow it down, so now it's, uh, it's a really tempered, quick uh, device. These technologies really allow the doctor to see the patient in real time, rapidly respond to an urgent crisis, uh, avoid sort of delays in patient care, and it really humanizes medicine because the patient and the family now see the doctor uh, on camera. They see the doctor live. They can have an interaction. They can see the response to the doctor. They get that sense of trust and sense of, of safety. It allows us more access to the patient in real time, day or night, around the clock. EVA can allow us to look, listen to a person's heart, go ahead and listen to their lungs. Uh, it can really actually facilitate transmission of information like an ultrasound or other testing across its own bandwidth. Uh, it can allow us to uh, get in a consultant uh, who simultaneously with us can, can look at the patient. For example, the ICU doctor and the surgeon together can be, look at a patient who's deteriorating and together have a discussion about what to do for the patient. The other thing the robot can do is it can go in and survey a patient's room automatically. It can actually look around and it can tell what's going on in the patient's room and make sure that uh, the bed, uh, head of the bed is up or that the patient is safe and not falling out of the bed. So we're, we're about to explore those capabilities it, at Ronald Reagan UCLA and, and we're really on the verge of a new frontier in safety for, for medicine. I think it's amazing because with doctors not always being able to be right there in the room, being able to have that access, I felt like when I was talking to the doctor, it didn't matter so much that he wasn't standing there, but he was still communicating with me and I felt connected to him. And I think that's a huge uh, part of you know, the interaction with a doctor, that you feel like he's listening, he's able to communicate. If he's not standing right there, I don't think it's as important as I just agree. getting the feedback that you need from the person and knowing that you know, yeah, you're able to be live hearing each other. There is that emotional bedside manner. That would be it. Bedside manner mm -hmm. is not lost oh, that's in a the very technology. Good point. He was saying the bedside manner has not been lost because my husband felt by talking to the doctor through the robot, he still felt that interaction and that's huge and you could see he just recovered, he's recovering from brain surgery and feels that. We've become a 24-7 a totally connected society. Uh, we use these tools every day. These tools are not foreign to us. In fact, many of the times when we're in person at the bedside, the family member is pulling out their cell phone and we're having a conversation via cell phone with another family member who's not there. Well, the most important aspect is that we improve care and, and we improve outcomes. Um, and where time is brain, we, we don't, we don't want to waste time. We want to optimize our time utilization.